हेलो डियर फ्यूचर डॉक्टर्स वेलकम टू मेमो नीट आई एम जय ठक्कर आई एम अ थर्ड ईयर एम बी बी एस स्टूडेंट एट श्री एम पी शाह गवर्नमेंट मेडिकल कॉलेज जामनगर गुजरात एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज अ बायोलॉजी एस एम ई हियर एट मेमो नीट एंड टूडे यू ऑल गेव द ब्रह्मास्त्र पार्ट टेस्ट थ्री राइट सो हाउ वॉज इट हाउ डू यू फील राइट नाउ आर यू गेटिंग द सेंस ऑफ कंप्लीशन ऑफ योर सिलेबस येस बिकॉज वी हियर एट मेमो नीट हैव वर्क वेरी हार्ड टू डिजाइन योर टेस्ट इन सच अ वे दैट यू आर कवरिंग बोथ क्लास इलेवन एंड क्लास ट्वेल्व पैरलली ओके सो वॉट यू हैव टू डू इज गिव द टेस्ट एंड कम हियर फॉर द वीडियो सॉल्यूशन ऑफ द टेस्ट ओके वी विल हियर गिव द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन ऑफ द टेस्ट इन डिटेल एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द बायोलॉजी पार्ट टू दैट इज द क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फिफ्टी वन टू टू हंड्रेड Okay, so let us start solving those questions. So, we are going to start with the biology part two. Okay, from question number one fifty one. So let us start with the question number one fifty one. The question one fifty one states that the systemic arrangement, okay, the systematic arrangement of taxa is called dash. Okay, so. as we know what is the systematic arrangement of taxa the systematic arrangement of taxa means the taxa different taxa represents the different levels okay and what is its systematic arrangement called yes it is called as hierarchy okay so what is the general meaning of hierarchy okay so the correct answer of this question will be option 4 that is hierarchy what is the general meaning of hierarchy it is ladder okay and the systematic arrangement of the taxa it is called as hierarchy okay so the correct answer of this question is option 4 that is hierarchy moving on to the next question that is question number 152 so the question 152 states that the basic unit or the smallest taxon of taxonomy or classification is called dash okay so it is asking about the smallest taxon or the basic unit of taxonomy so what is the basic unit of classification so you need to remember this line of ncert that the basic unit of classification is nothing but the species okay the species are the lowest level which are uh, found in the taxonomy and these are the basic unit of classification okay and these are the smallest taxon okay among all so the correct answer to this question is species option 1 moving on to the next question that is question number 153 the question 153 states that so it uh, there are two statements given over here and we have to identify which of them is correct okay the statement one states that linnaeus classified plants into trees shrubs and herbs on the basis of morphological characters now is this statement correct no this statement is incorrect why because see first of all the plants were classified into herbs shrubs and trees by not linnaeus okay the one who classified the plants into herbs shrubs and trees was aristotle okay so in place of linnaeus there should be aristotle so therefore this statement is incorrect let us see the statement 2 the statement 2 is Aristotle divided animals into group anema and inema okay so what is anema and inema so see this statement is correct first of all okay it was aristotle who classified the animals into two groups okay anema and inema now see uh, he classified animals into two groups on the basis of the blood okay the ones who have red blood are called as inema and the ones who do not have red blood okay no red blood were called as anema so this was the classification of animals by aristotle so the statement 2 is correct so here the statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct so what is the correct answer to this question yes it is option 2 that is only the statement 2 is correct okay i hope you are clear with this question moving on to the next question that is question number 154 the question 154 states that who was the founder 
who was the founder of the five kingdom classification okay the five kingdom system of classification was given by whom so see this question is directly from the lines of ncrt and you must remember that the five kingdom classification was given by r h whitaker okay so r h whitaker gave the five kingdom classification see carolus linnaeus gave the two uh, two kingdom system of classification okay so the two kingdom classification was given by carolus linnaeus and the five kingdom classification was given by r h whitaker okay so i hope you are clear with this question moving on to the next question that is question number 155 the question 155 states that we have to mark the incorrect pair okay so there are several organisms given in the options and uh, the mode of uh, reproduction is given in these options okay and we have to mark which is uh, matched incorrectly okay so let us see them one by one the first option is hydra so hydra reproduces by budding so uh, this pair is absolutely correct the next pair is flatworm regeneration so yes flatworm regenerates uh, flatworm reproduces by regeneration okay it has high capacity of regeneration third option is amoeba fragmentation so does amoeba reproduce by fragmentation no in amoeba what occurs amoeba it reproduces by binary fission okay and not fragmentation so Uh, the incorrect pair in this question is amoeba fragmentation so the correct answer of this question will be option 3 okay let us see the fourth option also so it is given yeast budding so yes yeast reproduces by budding okay so this pair is also correct so the correct answer of question 155 is option 3 i hope you are clear with this question moving on to the next question that is question 156 the question 156 states that select the correct sequence of taxonomic study of a newly discovered organism is okay so we have to find the correct sequence that how a newly discovered organism is studied taxonomically now see first of all when we discover a new organism okay for example we discovered a new organism let's say organism x okay you discovered organism x okay and you are first telling about the organism that the organism x is looking like this and its characters are like this okay uh, it contains certain characters so organism x and you figure out what are its characters okay first of all you uh, won't be able to identify because it is a new organism you have discovered a new organism so you are first telling about its characters that how is it looking so that is uh, its characters then after that you are matching these characters which are uh, with the characters which are known okay in the classification so that is you are identifying these characters okay so you are uh, f- i uh, you are first identifying the characters then you are matching these characters so then there occurs identification okay you identify the organism whether the organism is belonging to the current system of classification or is it a totally new organism after that uh, if it is a totally new organism then what you will do you will name it okay so you will name it and then you will classify it okay so this is how the process of Uh, the sequence of the taxonomic study of a newly discovered organism works so what is the first step the first step is called as characterization okay so the first step is characterization then the second step is identification okay second step is identification third step <coughs> is its nomenclature and the fourth step is to classify the organism okay so this is how the taxonomic study of a newly discovered organism works so the correct answer of this question is option 4 moving on to the next question that is question number 157 it states that which one of the following criteria are essential and they form the basis of classical taxonomic studies okay now see this question is about classical taxonomic studies and what are the classical taxonomic studies these classical taxonomic studies are based 
on the olden times okay they were done the classical taxonomic studies were done in the olden times and what is the basis of this classical taxonomic studies the basis of classical taxonomic studies is the morphological features of organisms so the organisms were classified on the basis of morphological features and what are the morphological features that is their external structure how the organism looks so that is the external structure okay so what is the question saying which one of the following criteria are essential and they form the basis of the classical taxonomic studies so the basis of classical taxonomic studies was formed by the morphological features of organism or it can be also called as the external structure of the organism so the correct answer of question number 157 will be option 4 that is external structure moving on to the next question that is question number 158 it states that which of the following is a class okay so you have seen the hierarchy in the taxonomy that is kingdom phylum class order family genus species okay so in that it is asking which is which one of the following option is a class okay now as we have seen mammalia okay so mammalia belongs to a class okay so mammalia is itself a class and uh, these three the sapindales primates and poales these three are the orders okay so the correct answer of this question is option 1 the next question is question number 159 it states that two animals okay there are two animals animal a and animal b they have similar morphological features and they are of fundamentally similar with each other okay so they must be treated as what so see if there are two animals okay which are having similar morphological features and also they are fundamentally similar with each other okay so they must be treated as one species okay one biological species okay so the correct answer of this question will be option 1 that is one biological species so i hope you are clear with this question moving on to the next question that is question number 160 The question one sixty states that the scientific name Rattus Rattus. Okay, so here a scientific name is given Rattus Rattus. It is an example of what? Okay, is it binomial nomenclature? Is it tautonyms or synonyms or both one and two? So see, this is a scientific name. Okay, uh, and in this we are able to see two names. Okay, Rattus and Rattus, and in this. see the first name r is written as capital and in second name the r is written as small so this is a typical example of binomial nomenclature okay it is a an example of binomial nomenclature and the binomial nomenclature in which the gen, uh, the genus name and the specific epithet okay this is the name of the genus and this is the name of the specific epithet so if these two are same then it is called as tautonym okay so rattus rattus is an example of what it is an example of binomial nomenclature and also a tautonym so here the correct answer will be option 4 that is both 1 and 2 moving on to the next question that is question number 161 it states that a genus having many species is known as dash okay so see if a genus contains one species then it is called as monotypic genus okay it is called as monotypic genus but if it contains more than one species okay if a genus contains more than one species then it is called as polytypic genus okay so here a genus is having many species so it will be called as what it will be called as polytypic genus okay so the correct answer of this question is option 1 that is polytypic moving on to the next question that is question number 162 it states that in taxonomic hierarchy which one of the following group of taxa will have more number of similarities as compared to others okay now see 
if you know the taxonomic hierarchy it is how so it is kingdom phylum class order family genus species okay and as we move from species towards the kingdom the number of similarities between the organism in a particular taxa it decreases okay so from species to kingdom the number of similarities will decrease okay so which will have maximum similarities among themselves the organism belonging to the species level okay a particular species level the different organisms belonging to that level will have the maximum number of similarities so let us see the options one by one option one is anacardiaceae convoluaceae and poaceae okay so anacardiaceae convoluaceae and poaceae these are the at the levels of families then second is polymonials poales and sapindales polymonials poales and sapindales are what these are orders then solanum petunia and atropa these are what these are different genus and these three organisms leopard tiger and lion these are the species okay and these species belong belong to a particular genus so as we first discussed that species share the maximum number of similar characteristics okay so the correct answer of this question will be option 4 that is leopard tiger and lion so in taxonomic hierarchy the a uh, group of taxa which will have more number of similarities as compared to other will be the species that is leopard tiger and lion okay so this was an example based question in which you must know these examples they belong to which taxonomic category and then you have to figure out that which one which will have the maximum number of similarities and which will have the minimum number of similarities okay so i hope you are clear with this question moving on to the next question that is question number 163 the question 163 states that how many criteria okay how many criteria are used in the five kingdom classification okay now see the five kingdom classification was given by r h whitaker okay and the number of criteria which he used was five okay so there were five criterias so we'll discuss them one by one the five criterias used by r h whitaker were okay so r h whitaker gave the five kingdom classification and the main criteria for the classification which he used were the cell structure okay that is the first one then the thallus or the body organization the third is mode of nutrition then fourth is mode of reproduction and fifth is the different phylogenetic relationships okay or the evolutionary relationships of the organism so these were the five characteristics let us repeat them once first is cell structure second is body organization third is mode of nutrition fourth is mode of reproduction and fifth are the phylogenetic relationships so these five criteria were used by r h whitaker in the five kingdom classification so the correct answer of this question is option 3 moving on to the next question that is question number 164 it states that the sole members of kingdom monera are okay so what are the characteristics of the organism of kingdom monera so kingdom monera contains the prokaryotes okay prokaryotes so in the kingdom monera the organisms are exclusively prokaryotic okay and what are the prokaryotes we know the examples of prokaryotes that belong to kingdom monera are the bacteria yes so several different bacteria are the prokaryotes which belong to kingdom monera okay so the answer to this question is option 1 the next question is question number 162 sorry the next question is question number 164 okay uh, the next question is question number 165 okay the question number 165 states that the archibacteria okay the archibacteria are special since they live in some of the harshest habitats such as marshy area hot springs extreme salty and all of the above now see the correct answer of this question is all of the above why because see see the archaea bacteria are special 
because they live in some of the harshest habitats and what are the examples of these harshest habitats in which archaebacteria are found so first are the marshy area in the marshy area the archaebacteria which are found are the methanogens okay the methanogens are found in the marshy areas then in hot springs in hot springs thermoacidophiles okay so thermoacidophiles are found in the hot springs and in extremely salty areas these are the halophiles okay halophiles are found in the extremely salty areas so they are found in all the three areas so the correct answer of this question is option 4 that is all of the above moving on to the next question that is question number 166 it states that the ciliates differ from all the other protozoans in dash okay so we have to identify the difference between the ciliates and the other protozoans okay so let us see the options one by one first option is they use pseudopodia for capturing the prey no the ciliates do not use pseudopodia for capturing the prey so that's a statement is incorrect then second option is they have a contractile vacuole for removing the excess water so see all the protozoans including ciliates have contractile vacuole okay so that is not a differ uh, differentiating factor between the ciliates and the other protozoan okay so this statement is also incorrect the third statement is they use flagella for locomotion now see ciliates are named so because they contain several hair like structures on their surface called as cilia so they uh, do not use flagella for locomotion okay they use cilia so this statement is also incorrect the fourth statement is they have two types of nuclei so see in the ciliates there are two types of nuclei okay this is the characteristic feature of ciliates okay it contains one macronucleus and one micronucleus okay the macronucleus and the micronucleus uh, macronucleus is responsible for the somatic functions of the cell and the micronucleus is responsible for the germinative purposes of the cell okay so the correct answer of this question is option 4 moving on to the next question that is question number 167 it states that choose the wrong statement okay so we have to choose the wrong statement among the four statements given below the first statement is yeast is unicellular and it is useful in fermentation so yes this statement is absolutely correct because yeast is an example of unicellular fungi okay and it is useful in the fermentation process okay the next statement is penicillium okay penicillium is multicellular and it produces antibiotics so see penicillium is also a multicellular fungi and it is also used for production of antibiotics that is penicillin is obtained from penicillium so second statement is also correct okay so first statement is correct second statement is also correct the third statement is neurospora is used in the study of biochemical genetics so yes neurospora use in biotechnology or biochemical genetics is very high so the third statement is also correct let us see the fourth statement the fourth statement is morels and truffles are poisonous mushrooms now is this statement correct no this statement is incorrect why because see morels and truffles are edible delicacies okay these are edible delicacies okay so these are edible fungi so uh, this statement is incorrect okay because they are not poisonous okay so the correct answer of this question is option 4 moving on to the next question that is question number 168 question 168 states that in which of the group of organism okay in which group of organisms the cell walls form the two thin overlapping shells which fit together okay so see the uh, if we read the question correctly then it is talking about the cell walls and they are forming two overlapping shells okay and they fit together so uh, what is the structure like so this structure if we describe it is like a soap box okay so if you have seen the soap box then there are two overlapping shells and they fit together okay so what is the soap box arrangement found in the soap box arrangement of the cell walls is found in the diatoms okay it is found in the diatoms 
and the dye atoms belong to what they belong to the chrysophytes okay so the chrysophytes are the dye atoms and they are having the characteristic cell walls okay that is they have two thin overlapping shells and they fit together like a soap box so that is the soap box appearance or the soap case appearance so the correct answer of this question is option 2 moving on to the next question that is question number 169 so it states that the imperfect fungi which are decomposers and of the litter and they help in the min mineral cycling belong to which okay which class so see first of all it is talking about imperfect fungi the imperfect fungi are nothing but the deuteromycetes okay so this is directly a line of ncrt that the deuteromycetes are called as imperfect fungi why because they can undergo both sexual and the asexual cycles okay so the correct answer of this question is option 2 that is deuteromycetes the next question is question number 170 the question 170 states that the structures the structures that help some bacteria to attach to the rocks or the host tissues are okay so the structures are found in the bacteria and they are helping in the attachment the attachment the structures which help in attachment of the bacteria are the fimbriae okay these are the fimbriae so the correct answer of this question is option 3 okay the fimbriae are helpful for the attachment of bacteria to the rocks or the host tissues okay the next question is question number 171 the question states that in a fully developed male gametophyte okay in a fully developed male gametophyte the number of nuclei is okay so the male gametophyte is what it is nothing but the pollen grain okay and it is asking that it is fully developed okay what is the meaning of fully developed means a mitotic division has taken place inside it okay inside the uh, pollen grain and it has formed total three cells okay and which are these three cells the first cell is a vegetative cell okay the first cell is larger and it is responsible for the nutrition and that cell is a vegetative cell and the sec uh, the other two cells are the two male gametes okay so this is how a mature male gametophyte looks okay fully developed male gametophyte it has total three cells so the correct answer of this question is option three moving on to the next question that is question number 172 the question 172 states that which of the following is haploid okay so we have to identify that among the following structures which of the structure is haploid the first option is style okay the style as we know it is diploid okay then the ovary the ovary is also diploid okay the third option is synergids the synergids are the cell which are found in the female gametophyte and these are the haploid structures okay then the third is primary endosperm nucleus okay the fourth option is primary endosperm nucleus the primary endosperm nucleus as we all know it is triploid okay so the correct answer of this question will be option three that is the haploid structure among the following options is the synergids okay moving on to the next question that is question number 173 it states that the embryo sac okay the embryo sac represents what so the embryo sac represents the mega gametophyte okay or the female gametophyte so the female gametophyte or the mega gametophyte is represented by the embryo sac okay so the correct answer of this question is option two the next question is question 174 okay it states that the spiny or sticky pollen grains and large fragrant flowers with well-developed nectarines are associated with what okay so see what is the feature of this uh, type of pollination now see it is talking about spiny or sticky pollen grains okay first of all this is the characteristic of pollen grains and then it is the characteristic of flowers that is large and fragrant flowers okay so where are large fragrant flowers found the large fragrant flowers are found okay due to uh, for to attract the insects okay to attract the insects 
and why do we want to attract the insects because the the insects are helping in the pollination okay the insects help in pollination and the type of pollination which is carried out by insects is called as what it is called as entomophily okay so entomophily is the pollination by the insects and to attract the insects the flower needs to be colorful large and fragrant okay and it pro also provides rewards like nectar okay so the anim uh, insects are attracted and they carry the pollen grains along with themselves why because the pollen grains are also sticky in nature and they pollinate the other flowers so the correct answer of this question will be option 2 that is entomophily moving on to the next question that is question number 175 the question 175 states that which of the following options is correct okay so we have to identify the correct statement among the uh, following options the first statement is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower okay so the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower is called as autogamy okay so yes this statement is absolutely correct the second statement is transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same plant okay so means the plant is same but from one flower to another flower the transfer is occurring so that type of transfer is called as geitonogamy okay so that is called as geitonogamy so yes this statement is also correct the third statement is transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a genetically different plant okay a genetically different plant means a different plant another plant okay another plant so that is called as xenogamy okay or cross pollination so yes this statement is also correct so we saw that all the three statements the first second and the third statement are correct so the correct answer to this question will be option 4 all of these okay moving on to the next question that is question number 176 okay the question 176 states that bagging prevents what okay so bagging bagging prevents what now see what is bagging first of all so in bagging what do we do is we cover the plant with a bag okay we cover the flower with a bag okay so what will it prevent it will prevent the external pollen okay from another plant or another flower to come and sit on the stigma okay to uh, come and uh, sit on the stigma so this will prevent the cross pollination and this cross pollination is undesired why because we are willing to get pure species from the plant okay so the bagging prevents undesired cross pollination so the correct answer of this question is option 4 moving on to the next question that is question number 177 the question 177 states that the stigma okay the stigma becomes receptive much before the release of pollen so what type of stigma is that now see whenever the stigma becomes receptive before the release of pollen it is called as protogyny okay but if the pollen are released first and the stigma matures afterwards then it will be called as protandry okay so this type of uh, maturation okay that is the uh, male and female reproductive parts do not mature at the same time okay they mature at different times so that is called as sexual lability okay that is called as sexual lability means the male and the female reproductive part mature at different times so this will prevent the fertilization okay so this will prevent the self pollination okay so it will prevent the self fertility so in this what is happening that the stigma that is the female gametophyte it is becoming receptive before the release of pollen okay means the female gametophyte is maturing first so that is called as protogyny okay so the correct answer of this question is option 2 moving on to the next question that is question number 178 it states that the portion of the embryonal axis between the plumule that is the future shoot and the cotyledons is called what okay so it is talking about this see if these are the two cotyledons okay and this is the plumule that is the future shoot and this will be the radical 
that is the future root and these are the two cotyledons okay so it is asking about this the embryonal axis between the uh, future shoot that is plumule and the cotyledons okay so this part is called what it is called as epicotyl means it is present above the cotyledons okay and between the plumule and the uh, cotyledons so that is called as epicotyl so the correct answer of this question is option 2 moving on to the next question that is question number 179 the question 179 states that the eluron layer is a part of what okay now see eluron layer is a triploid layer okay and it is responsible for the nutrition also <clears throat> the eluron layer is a part of endosperm okay so the correct answer of this question is option one that is endosperm moving on to the next question that is question number 180 the question 180 states that a triploid nutritive tissue okay a triploid nutritive tissue uh, what is the meaning of triploid that is 3n okay and nutritive tissue means it is talking about the endosperm okay so in which organism the endosperm is triploid okay the endosperm is triploid in the angiosperms okay so maize is an angiosperm so the correct answer of this question is option two that is the endosperm of maize is triploid that is 3n okay and it is a nutritive tissue moving on to the next question that is question number 181 the question 181 states that apomixis in plant means development of a plant dash okay so it is talking about apomixis and what is apomixis apomixis is the development of the future seeds okay or the future plant without fusion of gametes okay without fusion of gametes okay means there is no fusion of gametes and there is development of a plant so that is called as apomixis so the correct answer of this question will be option three that is without fusion of gametes moving on to the next question that is question number 182 the question 182 states that which one of the following fruits is parthenocarpic okay so what is parthenocarpy the parthenocarpy means the development of fruit okay without fertilization or the uh, fusion of gametes is called as parthenocarpy okay so means there is no fusion of gametes and the fruit is being developed so that uh, an example of parthenocarpy is what it is banana okay the example of parthenocarpy is banana so the correct answer of this question is option one that is banana moving on to the next question that is question number 183 the question 183 states that the scutellum which is observed in the grain of wheat or maize is comparable with which part of seed in the other monocotyledons now see the scutellum is nothing but a cotyledon only okay in the wheat or maize the cotyledon is called as scutellum okay so scutellum is present at the place of cotyledon so the scutellum which is observed in the grain of wheat or maize it is comparable with the cotyledon in the seed of other monocotyledons okay so the correct answer of this question will be option one that is cotyledon the next question is question number 184 it states that a mature male gametophyte is formed from a pollen mother cell by okay now see a pollen mother cell a pmc that is a pollen mother cell which is diploid it first undergoes a meiotic division okay so it undergoes meiosis so this meiosis forms haploid cell okay then it will undergo one mitosis okay so uh, it will undergo two mitotic division okay it will first undergo one mitosis and it will form a large uh, vegetative cell and a smaller generative cell then it will undergo another mitotic division and it will form three cells that is one large vegetative cell and other two uh, male gametes okay so this is the structure of male gametophyte a mature male gametophyte or a pollen grain 
so as we saw over here there is one meiosis and mitosis and another mitosis okay so there are two mitosis so a mature male gametophyte is formed from the pollen mother cell by one meiotic and two mitotic divisions okay so the correct answer of this question will be option 3 so i hope you are clear with this question moving on to the next question that is question number 185 it states that the total number of nuclei which are involved in the double fertilization in angiosperms are okay now see what happens in double fertilization in double fertilization it includes two processes that is syngamy and triple fusion what happens in syngamy there is the fusion of the uh, male gamete with the female egg egg nucleus okay so here two nuclei will be involved one nuclei of the male gamete and one nuclei of the egg nucleus then in triple fusion there is the fusion of the male gamete with the central cell nucleus okay so in the central cell there are total two nuclei and from the male gamete there will be one nuclei so this involves three nuclei okay so total 2 plus 3 that is in total there will be five nuclei involved in the double fertilization okay so the correct answer of this question is option 4 moving on to the next question that is question number 186 The question one eighty six states that a typical angiosperm embryo sac at maturity is okay. Now, if you have seen the structure of embryo sac, then there are three cells over here, then there are two central cells, and there are three cells over here. Okay, so two are synergids, one is egg cell. Here, three antipodals are present, and two central cells are present. So this uh, central cells. okay uh, they do not have two separate cells okay they are single cell and they are having two nuclei so the uh, total number of nuclei in the embryo sac are 8 okay then a uh, total number of cells in the embryo sac are 7 so the uh, mature or typical angiosperm embryo sac at maturity is it is 8 nucleate and 7 celled Okay so the correct answer of this question is option 4 Moving on to the next question that is question number 187 The question 187 states that which of the following is without exception in angiosperms okay means which is which is the identifying feature of angiosperm okay means you can identify the angiosperms if this feature is present so see <clears throat> let us see the options one by one The first is presence of vessels presence of vessel is not an a uh, a uh, identifying feature of angiosperm okay the vessels can be present in gymnosperms also second is double fertilization the double fertilization is the characteristic feature or the unique feature which is seen in angiosperms only okay so double fertilization is seen only in the angiosperms okay it is seen in no other classes so double fertilization is without exception seen in angiosperms so the correct answer of this question is option 2 okay let us see the other two options also secondary growth secondary growth is also not a unique feature of angiosperm okay it can be seen in other classes then autotrophic nutrition so autotrophic nutrition is also not uh, without exception in the angiosperms okay some angiosperms are heterotrophic also moving on to the next question that is question number 188 the question 188 states that which one of the following events takes place after double fertilization okay so it is asking the event taking place after double fertilization now as we saw double fertilization involves what it involves syngamy and triple fusion after syngamy there is the formation of zygote and after triple fusion there is the formation of primary endosperm nucleus okay or the pen cell so let us see the options one by one the first option is the pollen grain germinates on the stigma does it occur after fertilization no okay that occurs before fertilization so that is incorrect the second statement is the pollen tubes enter the embryo sac so that also occurs before double fertilization that is also incorrect the third statement is 
two male gametes are discharged into the embryo sac so that also occurs before double fertilization okay so that is also incorrect the fourth statement is the pen okay that is the primary endosperm nucleus develops into endosperm okay so yes see one male gamete fuses with the two central nuclei to form the triploid primary endosperm nucleus and this triploid primary endosperm nucleus further develops into endosperm and the function of endosperm is what is to provide nutrition and the endosperm is triploid in nature okay so the correct answer of this question will be option 4 moving on to the next question that is question number 189 the question 189 states that double fertilization involves dash okay so we just now discussed about double fertilization that double fertilization involves syngamy and it also involves triple fusion okay so the correct answer of this question will be option one that is syngamy and triple fusion moving on to the next question that is question number 190 okay the question 190 states that the question 190 states that the fertilization is synonymous with what okay now see what happens in fertilization there is the fusion of male gamete with the egg okay male gamete is also haploid and egg is also haploid so this is called as syngamy okay the other name of fertilization is syngamy okay so the correct answer of this question will be option 2 that is syngamy moving on to the next question that is question number 191 okay question 191 states that amongst all the kingdoms the only taxon that exists in nature as biologically cohesive unit is the dash okay now see here an important term has been used that is the biologically cohesive unit what is the meaning of this biologically cohesive unit now see biologically cohesive unit means it is the group of organism which can first of all interact with each other okay it can interact with each other okay and also biologically cohesive means they are able to produce able to produce fertile offsprings okay so these are two, the two uh, characteristic features which suggest that the uh, organism or the taxon is biologically cohesive unit okay first of all they can interact with each other the organisms and also they are able to produce the fertile offsprings now uh, this is seen in which taxon the only taxon in which the biologically cohesive unit or they are able to produce fertile offsprings this feature is seen only in the species okay the species are interrelated with each other they interact with each other and also they produce fertile offsprings so that is the feature of species so the correct answer of this question is option one that is species moving on to the next question that is question number 192 question 192 states that binomial nomenclature is described in the book dash okay now see the binomial nomenclature was proposed by carolus linnaeus okay and he described this in his book called systema naturae okay so he wrote the book systema naturae and he described binomial nomenclature in this book okay so the correct answer of this question is option three Moving on to the next question that is question 193 it is an assertion reason type of question and the assertion is given that species is a group of individuals with fundamental similarities. So is the assertion correct? Yes the assertion is absolutely correct because the group of individuals with fundamental similarities is the species okay. The next uh, the uh, reason given here for this is indica leo tuberosum represents such group of individuals so is the reason correct so yes the reason is also correct because see indica is also a species leo is also a species and tuberosum is also a species so these three belong to species okay 
so the reason given is also correct but does it explain the assertion okay uh, that why is it uh, why it is, uh, is the species a group of individuals with fundamental similarities no the reason does not explain okay the assertion it is it has only given the examples of species so the correct answer of this question will be option 2 that is both assertion and reason are true but the reason is not the correct explanation of assertion okay Moving on to the next question, that is question number 194. The question 194 states that which among the following is not a prokaryote, okay? So we have to identify which of them is not a prokaryote, okay? So the organism which is not a prokaryote is, let us see one by one, okay? So see, nostoc, nostoc is a prokaryote then second is mycobacterium so mycobacterium is also a bacteria so that is also a prokaryote third is saccharomyces now see saccharomyces belongs to fungi okay and fungi are what these are eukaryotes okay so saccharomyces is not a prokaryote okay it is a eukaryote so the correct answer of this question will be option three okay that is saccharomyces Fourth is oscillatoria, so that is also a bacterium that is a prokaryote. Moving on to the next question, that is question number 195. The question 195 states that which statement is wrong for viruses, okay? So, among the following statements, we have to identify which of them is an incorrect statement related to virus, okay? Now see, the first statement is all are parasites. So see, viruses are all parasites, okay? See, if they are present outside the living organism, then they are present just like a rock, okay? They uh, they are biologically inert outside the living organism. So, uh, but whenever it comes in contact with living organism, then it uh, takes over the cellular machinery of the living organism and it starts replicating. So they act as parasites. So all the viruses are parasites. So this statement is absolutely correct. The second statement is all of them have helical symmetry. So all the viruses do not have helical symmetry. Okay. There are various types of symmetry which are present in the viruses. Okay. So this statement is incorrect and we have to identify the wrong statement for virus. So the correct answer to this question is option two. Let us read the other two statements also. The third statement is they have an ability to synthesize nucleic acids and proteins. So yes, this statement is correct. Okay. The fourth statement is antibiotics have no effect on them. So this statement is also correct, okay? Because antibiotics are not effective on the viruses, okay? For viruses, we have to give the antiviral drugs, okay? So the correct answer of this question is option two. Moving on to the next question, that is question number 196. It states that select the wrong statement, okay? So in this question also, we have to select the wrong statement among the following four statements given. Let us see one by one. The first statement is the walls of diatoms are easily destructible. So is this statement correct? No, this statement is incorrect. Why? Because see the diatoms, their walls are formed of silica. Okay. And this silica is biologically inert. Okay. This is, it is not easily destructible. Okay. It is not destructible. okay and that is the reason of the formation of diatomaceous earth okay it is formed by diatoms or the walls of diatoms because they are easily not destructible and they are formed of silica so it is a wrong statement so the correct answer of this question will be option one let us read the other three statements also so see second statement is diatomaceous earth is formed by the cell walls of diatoms so this statement is absolutely correct Third statement is diatoms are the chief producers in oceans. So yes, the chief producers in oceans are diatoms. So this statement is also correct. Fourth statement is diatoms are microscopic and they float passively in the water. So yes, this statement is also correct. Moving on to the next question that is question number 197. Question 197 states that select the wrong statement among the following. Okay, so in this also we have to find out which statement is incorrect. The first statement is mosaic disease in tobacco and AIDS in human are caused by viruses. So yes, this statement is correct because the mosaic disease in tobacco is caused by the tobacco mosaic virus. Okay, and AIDS in humans 
is called by the human immunodeficiency virus or the HIV. Okay, so that is caused by viruses. So this statement is correct. The second statement is the viroids were discovered by D. J. Ivanovsky. So were the viroids discovered by Ivanovsky? No, the viroids were discovered by T. O. Diener. Okay, so Diener discovered the viroids. Okay, so this statement is incorrect. So the correct answer to this question will be option two. Then let us read the other two statements also. W. M. Stanley showed that viruses could be crystallized. So yes, this statement is also correct. The fourth statement is the term contagium vivum fluidum was coined by M. W. Bejering. Okay, so yes, that is also correct. Okay, he coined the term the infectious living fluid that is contagium vivum fluidum. Okay, so the correct answer will be option two. Moving on to the next question, that is question number one ninety eight. The question one ninety eight states that in which of the following are likely to be present in deep sea water? Okay, so which of the following organisms will be found in the deep sea water? So what is the condition in the deep sea water? First of all, the pressure in the deep sea water is very high. Also, the salt, okay, salt concentration in the deep sea water is also very high. so these are the extreme conditions okay and which are the organisms found in the extreme conditions yes these are the archaea bacteria okay the archaea bacteria are found in these extreme conditions and to be specific the archaea bacteria which are found in high salt concentrations are called Halophiles. Yes, absolutely correct. So the correct answer of this question is option one. That is archaea bacteria. Moving on to the next question or the penultimate question. That is question number one ninety nine. It states that the organism which are called as methanogens. These are most abundant in a dash. Okay. Now see, methanogens are mainly found in the gut of ruminants. okay and what are the ruminants so see the ruminants are what these are the cattle okay or the cows in the gut of ruminants methanogens are present and they are responsible for formation of methane gas okay and uh, so the methanogens will be maximum present in what they will be ma uh, maximally present in the cattle yard okay so the correct answer of this question is option 1 moving on to the next question that is question number 200 okay so it is the last question the question 200 states that the virus envelope is known as dash okay now see the virus envelope is called as capsid okay it is a nucleoprotein structure okay and it uh, acts as a envelope of the virus okay so it protects the genetic uh, material of the virus Okay, so the correct answer of this question is option one, that is capsid. Okay, so here we have covered all the questions from question number one fifty one to question two hundred, that is the part two of biology section. Okay, so I hope you are clear with all the questions. If in case you have any doubts in any question, please feel free to put them in the comment section, and we are always here to answer your doubts. Okay, thank you so much, and all the very best for the next part test. Thank you.